Yes, we can. Yes. Right. So what we discussed in the last session about, uh, right, so what exactly data analysis is all about. So, of course, I have given a high-level overview over analysis, right, the kind of analysis rules or analyst rules we see in the field of IT. Either it can be business analyst, and quality analyst, data analyst, all that. At the same time, why data analyst required and what kind of tools one must be good with. Right? So that part I have already discussed with you. Now what I'm going to discuss today about what are the different types of data analysis we have because there are different different types of data analysis we'll be having. In, this is all some from the context of analytical point of view. So there are different different because why do we do data analysis? Why do we require to analyze the data and for what purposes? So what, what must be the final uh, final deliverable we want to expect, right? So this is what generally something which we have to be known with. So that's the reason why normally data analysis will be divided into these many parts. So these are all the different types of data analysis, which normally we will be having. Means whenever we try to analyze the data. So these are the different, different types which data analysis consists of. Means final conclusion, what is that is required and all based on these uh, type of data analysis we do. Because I don't say that everybody follow all the types. Some may follow one, some may follow two in this, right? So some may follow three, some may follow four, right? So there is different, different uh, perceptions they do, right? So because what irrespective of the tools which normally organization uses, right? So either it can be SQL, right? It can be Python, right? So whatever the tools are we going to use and all. So the behind that, whatever the base point to perform, Analysis, data analysis, and all other thing is what something we talk about types of data analysis. So now, when it comes to the types of data analysis, are as follows. You can see over here. These are the different different types of data analysis we have. The first one is called descriptive. Second one is called diagnostic. Third one is called predictive. Next, prescriptive and text. So these are the different types of data analysis, which normally we will be having. Now, first one is called descriptive. Descriptive means, let's say, for example, we want to know what exactly happened, right? Let's say, for example, I'll give you uh, from the point of sales system, because the same example we are taking earlier also, the same, let me take you the same example so that will be understood well. For example, you want to know uh, you have identified because based on the agent that you guys were doing a business, right? So you are running a retail store, you own the retail store. As part of activity or the regular act, regular activities you are performing in day-to-day -day operations in your business, you have identified that there is a there is a decline in terms of the sales happening for a couple of months. Okay which you have identified because anyway, every day or daily, weekly, monthly, right? So quarterly, we take all the reports, right? So how much uh, how much sales are happening, right? So which product is moving fast, which product is moving slow, and uh, what will be the uh, sales in the weekdays, especially on the business working days, or else in the weekends, if it is weekends, uh, how about morning days, right? So afternoon or high evenings or nights, right? So we want to know, we will analyze all this. Based on that, we will be evaluating and we can analyze the rush because how many people will come to our store on at what time, right? So based on that, how to manage customers, right? So how to, in order to make them inconvenient, right? So while doing shopping and all, what are the necessary 
uh, activities we have to note and necessary actions to be taken by us and all everything will be decided so it is all something based on the concrete uh, concrete uh, uh, concrete confirmation based on that only we do the we take the decisions so in this regard because this is a regular activity you are we are doing in this you have identified that there is a decline in sales for last couple of months is happening okay now some but you you are uh, but you have not known that it was decline of sales right you have not known that so internally if you go then you have identified but on a high level note you understood something is going on right? something is going on that it's not but what being a business owner you understood that this is not the way it was earlier that's what finally you uh, you have uh, identified that's what on a high level note. now you want to know what exactly happens inside right what happened and all you want to know that so the type of analysis we do especially in reference to the data is called descriptive analysis so descriptive analysis is the one which is a kind of type of analysis which majorly explain about what happened in the organization right? from the organizational perspective i'm giving this example because let's have a discipline of it so what happened right so what is happening within the organization is what something we want to know so for that the kind of analysis we do based on the data which is available with us this kind of type of data is called descriptive analysis Okay, descriptive. Descriptive analysis majorly focusing on what happened or what happens in the organization. So that where are the flaws, right? So what is, is this organization going on well? Or is there any difficulties are happening? Because sales, for example, sales is a decline, right? For example, it was happening. So why sales can be declined, right? So there are multiple reasons. Maybe your customer service may not be good. Maybe your product cost, commodity cost might be higher. Maybe your availability of the products, whatever is required for the customers on day-to-day -day basis or something like that is not available on the day, right? So because means indirectly your supply chain process and inventory management and what kind of products are moving fast and all over thing. This is where somewhere you are facing a problem. The reason what is happening, you couldn't, you have not identified in a proper manner right so maybe this is also because of this reason so because one is customer service may not be good that could be one reason in decline in sales second the commodity cost might be higher when it compares to the others and all that that could be one reason it may be right it could be one reason third uh, availability of the products what customer wants if it is not available on the store they don't buy it Right. So this could be one reason. So if you have identified that there is a decline in sales happens in an organization, for example, in a retail store, there are different reasons for that. So when you are taking a business decision, especially in the organization level, so we must be knowing about what is happening inside of the organization because these are all interconnected. Let's say, for example, you have you are doing day-to-day -day sales of your products. So let's say, for example, you have taken bath soaps, right? So which is a hundred quantity of bath soaps are available with your store. For example, I'm just giving an example of four different brands. Every day products are selling right so selling the products so automatically the quantity will come down now maybe one or two brands are moving slower one or two brands are moving faster so if you want to manage an effective supply chain what is that you have to see within the bar soaps which brand is moving faster how fast the brand movement was so based on that, you have to arrange the products in such a way where should it shouldn't be any kind of shortage to the customers because most of the people who are buying, choosing the brand. So this is where generally there are interconnects. So for that, what is required? So for that, whatever the sales happens, equivalent to that, you need to order goods from the manufacturer 
through an effective web supply chain process and all everything, you will be getting all the goods and you are managing all this in the inventory. At the same time, for this inventory, again, product classification, grading, right? So at the same time, giving some uh, uh, tax for everything, right? So barcoder and all everything. So this is all we do. At the same time, evaluating the sales. This is something, a continuous activity, which you guys may have to do it, right? So these are all interconnected, right? What is that I'm trying to say? Right from ordering the product to the to the manufacturer till it was sold by, it was sold, uh, which was purchased by the customer. There is, what are the activities which are involved within the retail store was everything was interconnected. So if it is impacting on one area, automatically it impacts on the other areas also. Right or not. So if you want to know about what happened or what happens within the organization, right? So what is that we happen and all the kind of analysis, what is that we do is called descriptive analysis. Now, second type of analysis is called diagnostic analytics. Why it is required? Why is it happened? Let's say, for example, we have identified decline in sales. Why was it happened? Because sometime back I told you that there can be multiple reasons for that. Maybe your products, what are the commodity commodities you are selling? Might be either, it might be at the higher cost. That could be one reason. Uh, unavailability of the product, whatever the products available required for the customer and all, that may not be available in your store. That could be one reason behind this. Uh, one more reason that your customer service means people are there were no people who can guide customers to show you the products, etc. For example, right? so people may be dissatisfied and they are not buying it. So because of that, right? So that could be one reason behind. At the same time, uh, unavailability of the products, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are the reasons behind decline in sales, which you have identified. So decline in sales is what something you have identified. As long as you have not identified why decline in sales happen, if you have not addressed the problem, you don't get the solution. So what is required? So there is a connect between descriptive and diagnostic. Di diagnostic means why is it happened? For what reason it was happened? So based on the diagnostic data analysis, how to correct this, right? So what kind of solution is something uh, is something required for our business to improve our sales and all everything that is all something comes under the business decision right so to implement that business strategy and decision and all there is some strategies required so if you want to implement that strategy you need to follow some tactics behind so these are all something interconnected so when you want to implement a business strategy or when you want to implement uh, tactics for that, right? So business decision, strategy and tactics and all. First of all, you need to know what was happened and why it was happened, right? So these two are interconnected. So descriptive, majorly focusing on what happened in the organization. Diagnostic analytics and all diagnostic data analysis, something will be knowing about why is it happened, right? Why it happened? What was the reason behind uh, the problem which we have identified or observed so far, right? This is second. Next, predictive analysis. Predictive analysis means what could be the possible, uh, what could be the possible uh, problem we may be facing in future. This is where we call it predictive analytics stands for. Predictive means what, what could be the possible uh, possibility in future. Let's say, for example, I'll give you a generalized example, a normal example, so that you will be understood. For example, one person has went to the diagnostic center where you can give some blood test and all that. Right? And that, that person uh, has identified that he may have a possibility, right? So because uh, that's what he's uh, thinking of that whether I have a diabetes or not, right? For example, for example, he want to know that. So for that, what is that he do? He'll go to the doctor. So doctor will prescribe him to give a blood test. So fasting, right? So before fasting and after some exercise and exercise. So that based on that, usually, so they will analyze it. Let's say that person went to the diagnostic center, given the blood for the sample, sample blood for testing purposes. 
So whenever the report comes, there are some, you say, you, you, I think you might have seen already, right? So there were some recommending, uh, recommending percentage of uh, number will be there, right? What, is, what should be the recommended percentage? That recommended percentage based on the age, based on the gender, okay? All that will be there, right? So for example, if it is men, right? So if it is uh, young people, adult, and as less like that, right? So women, right? So young and uh, adult, right? So adult, right? So there will be some categorizations. So what must be the normal values and all everything must be there in that. So what was the value which was presented based on the diagnosis they have made? So based on the doctor will suggest you, let's say if this is the thing which is continued, there is a possibility that you may fall into the diabetes category because there are some calculations, there are some figures which was mentioned. So based on that, what doctor says, right? So for example, assume that gentleman doesn't have a proper lifestyle, right? So he doesn't have any proper lifestyle, no discipline in terms of personal lifestyle is concerned for any reason, right? So let us not discuss that, right? So that is it. So that is the thing. No, so what doctor suggests him? Doctor suggests him, please follow these guidelines, right? So take food on time, right? So take minimum exercise is required. At least seven to eight hours of sleep is needed for you. At the same time, uh, away from uh, the habits, if you have any, right? So don't put more pressure and tension on yours. So that impacts your health and all, right? So there are some lifestyle changes which doctor suggests to that person so that he can postpone because he may not avoid this in future. At least he can postpone not to fall into the diabetes category, right? So this is where we call it as predictive analytics. Predictive analytics means based on the data, based on the report, whatever we have got so far as of now, what could be the possible impact in future? This is where we call it as predictive analytics or predictive analysis, whatever it is, right? So in future, what could be the possible thing which may happen in future? So on what basis you are analyzing it? You are based, you are analyzing based on the present reports which you had with you. Now in the same way, let's say for example, when we have taken a retail store, let's say for example, we have identified Based on the research, we have identified that uh, we have not, we are not managing which product is moving faster, which product is moving slower and all that. That sort of analysis was not there. For example, in the organization, what it leads to now so that you don't know what products are customers are required and what products the customers don't need it. Right? What products required by the customer, you don't know. So it result in what? Finally, what, what it results in, end of the day, this will result in, yeah, so end of the day, what will happen, end of the day, this will result in, uh, what we call that, this will result in the decline in sales, because some customers are coming and going, right, so declining sales, why, because the availability of products is not there, so what could be the possible uh, possible impact on the future. So in future, if it is declining sales and all, it is impacting on the financial situation of the organization, right? So your reserves, operational reserves and all everything in terms of the current reserves, current uh, required money reserves and all everything, that monetary reserves might be affected due to that. So because of that, there is a possibility where functioning of a retail store may fall under risk. This is where generally predictive analysis or analytics come into picture. So generally this is what will be done by identifying what could be the possible impacts in future. This is where we call it as predictive analysis or analytics stands for. So this is the third type of data analysis. The fourth one is called prescriptive. What should we do, right? So what must be our action plan now? Right. So, because based on what, based on the descriptive, what happened? Second, diagnostic, why is it happened? Third, predictive, in future, what could be the possible threats and the risks which might we might face? Based on that, what kind of decisions we require to take now, right? So, what kind of action 
plan we have to develop to address these problems and to minimize the risk. So this is what we call it as prescriptive analysis or prescriptive analytics. Okay, these are the four major ones. I'll explain about text later for some time, right? So these are the four basic analysis or analytic types which normally we do for any organization. And do remember whatever I'm explaining to you, this is nothing to do with any organization as specific. Okay. So this can be related for any organization, right? So either it can be from any domain, right? It can be healthcare, it can be banking, it can be insurance, it can be retailing, it can be oil and gas, it can be travel and telecom, any domain, any domain, any business. If they want to know the status of the business, why is it happening? How is it happening? How business is performing, right? So where are we? Uh, where are we uh, down, right? So what flaws were I did? What flaws we have? So how to correct, right? So if you want to, if they want to know this on day-to-day -day basis, because there is, there are teams which organizations we have different different teams will work on that. So to do all this, what is required? It is not something to do with assumption based because simply by by assuming something, assuming something based on the thing which you can see, you cannot take the decision. There must be a concrete, uh, the concrete confirmation of the evidences which you have to see based on the only decisions will be taken. Right? So for that, what is required, it's always important for us to analyze the data based on these ideas. Descriptive analysis, majorly try to understand about what is happens in the organization. You can relate this to any organization. Okay? That's the reason data analysis is so popular. So I'm not comparing this with other areas, but data analysis, why is it so popular? Because for every organization, data analysis is required in every stage of their business. Either a business may be a startup, or it may be a running one now, or the organization which is under growing stage or growth stage. Right? So because once it is grown, you have to retain it. If it is under growing, you have to stabilize that. If it was not grown, you have to reach to that extent from the beginner level to intermediary, intermediary to senior level. That's how the progress of the business has to grow. So in this process, constant understanding over the activities happening within the organization, where are we flaws? And what are the flaws? Why is it happened? Right? So what could be the possible impacts because of these if it is continued for a long time? So how to overcome that? Right? What kind of strategies? What kind of decisions to be taken? It's not only decision, strategy to be implemented. So for that, what tactics? So which is a continuous process for any organization. To do that, what is required? You need to have to have a knowledge over four different things. Descriptive. What happens? Diagnostic. Why it happened? Predictive. What could be the possible impact in future? Prescriptive. What should we do finally? So based on these four areas. Yeah. So sorry. Based on these three. Right. So based on these three analysis, whatever we do. So finally, whatever the final solution are we going to come up with is what generally we call it as prescriptive analysis or analytics also, you can call it as, right? So prescriptive analytics or analysis. So what should we do and what action do we require to perform, right? So by understanding all these three, this is where generally data analysis come into picture. Okay, right, this is the point. Now, yeah, now the next one about text means text is also one of the type of analysis where we are trying to understand the information from the unstructured data because there are there will be two kind of data so one is structured data second is unstructured data so how is it different structured data means whatever the uh, let's say for example uh, we are taking retailing uh, store as an example structured data means you have all the reports, right? So because you have all the reports of the uh, customers who are coming to you, right? So how much sales happened, right? So which is the stock available as of now with you, right? So which stock is moving faster, which stock is moving slower. So you have all the data in a disciplined manner, 
You have all these data in a disciplined manner. That's what we call it as structured data. It's all we call it as structured data. Now, the second one about opposite to that, unstructured data, because there is no structure as such. Because whatever the data which is available with you is something unstructured, right? So this is what generally we call it as type, right? So type of text is what generally one of the type of data analysis. So where in this type, what text, what is that we do? In this, how we are going to understand from the unstructured data means whatever you want to understand from the existing one. So how do we understand from the existing information which is available with you? It can be of any other format, right? It can be in text format or anything and all. So this is also one of the type of data analysis which normally we do. Because when we are working in the real world, there will be some information which will be structured, right? And it will be available with us where we can work it. But there will be some situations we come across in the real world where the data may not be structured enough. So if this is not structured and all that, so how to make it, how to make it in a streamlined way, right? So how to, uh, how to process it further. This is all something which on day-to-day -day basis, any organization requires. Some people who normally works in back of it is what something is called data analysis, right? So data analyst, the kind of role which will be played to analyze based on the data, the kind of roles, whatever, in the organization level will be there is called data analyst role. So data analyst, something relating to the data analyst are the people who analyze the data. So what kind of data? It can be of anything. It can be customer data. It can be employees data of the organization. It can be of sales reports. For what purpose? For different, different reasons. Whatever the uh, reasons, like for example, people, some people wants to know about the performance of their organization. Some people wants to know about how productive our employees are. Some people wants to know how quality services I'm giving to the customer and what will be the, what customers are thinking about us, right? Right, so some customers, some organizations wants that. And some organizations wants to know what could be the possible decisions we might require to take in future to expand our business successfully, right? So these are different, different reasons. So depends on the kind of reasons, whatever they have, depends on the kind of reasons, what they require, whatever the kind of analysis we want to do in a systematic manner, not again based on the assumptions. Again, I'm repeating. This is not something roughly by just assuming something, we cannot take decisions because there are a lot of effort we are putting in to implement some business strategy, a lot of money, effort, manpower, right? So if more than all the effort, time, because time is more valuable than any other time, anything, right? So even equal when above than money, time is, right? So time you cannot buy, right? So once it, one hour gone, you cannot take it back. Even if you spend in a number of money, you cannot take that back. So it's because the quality of time, what you are spending, this is also important. So if you want to know about all this, what is that you require? There must be a concrete evidence of information which you have to be there with you on the table. So before you're going to take a decision, based on the decision implementation, how do we do and all everything happens subsequently parallelly after that. So for that, there must be some team who should work within the organization is called data analyst people. So these data analyst people used to perform. These are the activities and all. These are using, these are the types of uh, analysis and all everything. People will try to understand what is that is required. So why is it happening all that? So based on that, whatever the required decisions to be taken, to increase the performance of the organization will be done by those people. So this is what generally, these are the different, different types of data analysis we have. And these are the different, different types of data analysis, which normally being people who are planning to move towards data analysis side, this sort of high level understanding is not something essentially required, is what something needed. And this is all about uh, today, right? So I hope you got an idea. Clear? Is it clear or not, everyone? Yes, it is. 